Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas, and welcome to this, the third in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Super Mario game in Unity 5. So, last episode we started building up all this just here, and we've got a couple of objects now in our hierarchy. And if you remember, we started working with this, parenting objects, and we also have these clouds, which aren't quite parented, but for now, they're going to stay out of um, any sort of game object in the hierarchy. They can stay there for now. Uh, this tutorial will be about creating the question mark blocks and uh, the pipes. And we'll also be dealing with hierarchy again using some parent and child skills, but we'll be doing things slightly differently as to how we did the ground section. So, first of all, I'm going to go to textures. And if you remember, we imported these last episode two green pipes. We'll get to them uh, secondly in this tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is create the question mark block. To do that, import these two textures, which you can get from our website, as always, which is in the description below. Drag and drop them into uh, Unity in the textures folder down here. And the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to have a game object which primarily displays this question mark block and eventually we'll create a script which will change it to this when we hit it. So to start with, I am going to go to this block here. And if you remember, we arranged this block so as it was center of our running platform. So if we turn the camera around, remember you can use the, um, sorry, the right mouse button to uh, pan your camera around, the left mouse button using the hand to look at, uh, to move the camera around like so. And remember as well, another one, if you hold down your right mouse button and use the WASD keys, you can look around your scene. So W zooms in, S zooms out, A and D. So I'm going to make a clone of this particular block, since it is in pretty much the right sort of place. Um, in fact, I've just noticed it looks like it's upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate on the y-axis there by 180. Okay, that looks better now. That looks a bit more how it should do. So yes, click your arrow tool here and on brown block, hold control and press D. And it will duplicate as always. Hold control and pull it. Oops. Let me just move the camera this way a touch and pull it out on the X. Ooh, wrong object selected there. Be very careful what you have selected. So take this and move it outwards to there. So now I'm going to right click and I'm going to rename and I'm going to call this one question block uh, 001 for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take off the mesh renderer. Now it doesn't matter if we have um, any sort of texture on there at the moment because this question block will never actually appear. So your next thing to do is game object, 3D object and cube. Let's call this cube um, unopened block and let's put the position as 0, 0, 0, so it's down here now. However, we need to drag and drop onto our question block 0, 0, 001. And it does, yes, I thought it might do it, it changed the uh, position again. So we need to just zero out that position again, and it puts it in place of this block here. So now, you've probably guessed it, you drag and drop this texture onto this block, and it's upside down. Let's just take the rotation off there. So that should be 180, yep, yeah, and that should be zero. So that is fine. So just to recap on this quickly, we have a question block with no mesh on it, no mesh renderer, I should say, and within that we have an unopened block with a mesh renderer attached. Next thing we need to do is if we take that unopened block, hold Control, press D to duplicate, Right click, rename, and we'll call this 
opened block. And then take this dead block texture and put it on there. So just to show you what this looks like, if we just pull this out of there, you can see contained within this question block 001 is the question block and the unopened block. So eventually, uh, probably in a couple of tutorials time, we'll be creating a script which will swap these around. So over here, where you have open block, in the inspector pane at the very top, you'll have a little tick. Make sure you untick that. Now to give a bit more insight, I'm going to do the same on unopen block there. And you'll notice they both disappear. So when we start the game up, we need to make sure that this is ticked. So eventually, as I say, we'll create a script where we'll switch it over. So we hit our block, that switches off, and then this one switches on. So it would instantly change from the question mark to the sort of dead block, as it were. So for now, as I say, make sure you have unopened block ticked and then open block unticked. So it just displays as that. And just to make it look a bit more sort of Mario-ish, I'm now going to duplicate this brown block, put it there. I'm going to duplicate the question block, and I'll put it there. And then take this block again, and put it there. Uh, let's take this question block, let's pull it up, about there, and across to there. So as you can see, it is starting to look a little bit more like a level. So the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to extend our ground over here a bit and put a pipe over here. And the pipe works in the same sort of way. So for now, let's go to our ground section. Let's take these uh, cubes here, which is the ground, and let's duplicate them along here. Now, the, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, there will be quite a few people saying, oh, well, that's quite a lot of objects. You don't need to worry about the amount of objects you can use in one scene in Unity. You will be absolutely amazed how much Unity can actually cope with. So, what I intend to do in the future with this tutorial is sort of break down each level into about three or four sections. So, everything here currently is in section one and it will be, say, this area over here. And then we'll contain that in another object, to so say it's section one. And then we have section two and section three. Well, that's for another tutorial, but that is where we're going to go. We're gonna kind of split it down a bit more. Okay, so now we want to build our pipe. So we go to game object, and let's first of all, uh, 3D object. And we've been using cubes up until now, we need to use a cylinder. So let's, I'm, go, I'm going to zero out the position on that cylinder for now. And then I'm going to place it how I want it. So let's take it in to 0 0.5 on the Z or Z axis. And let's pull it along to about there. And let's pull it up to, let's say about there, so we need to reduce the scale slightly. So let's put the scale on the Y as 0 0.5. And there we go. That's now flush against our ground. And you've probably guessed it by now. Drag and drop the green pipe texture, that's green pipe 001, onto our pipe. Next thing, take this pipe, Control D to duplicate. And what I'm going to do is on the scale, on the X, I'm now going to put this as, let's see, what should we put this? Let's put 1.25 and on the Z or Z, 1.25. But let's decrease the scale even more on our Y and let's put this as 0 0.1. So now let's pull this to the top of our pipe. And you can see it is starting to look a bit like a pipe now. So let's rename the first cylinder. Uh, let's rename this as pipe um, gullet. Let's rename the second piece. 
as pipe top. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little section on top of the pipe which appears black. So once again, oh, oops, we want to go to the pipe gullet and I'm going to duplicate it. So hold control, press D. I want to keep the scale as 1 and 1 on the X and Z, but I want to change the scale of the um, Y a little bit smaller than 0 0.5, so 0 0.25, I think. Let's just pull it out to about there. Yep, that's fine. So now go to the materials folder down here, right click, create, and let's go to material. I'm going to name this material simply pipe entry and I just want it a solid black color about there so now drag and drop that black uh, material onto our pipe there as you can see there is kind of a bit of interference there so we need to make this a little bit smaller. So let's put the scale as 0 0.95 and 0 0.95. And let's pull it down slightly. Remember, don't hold control at this point. You just need to either play with it there or you can manually adjust in your transform settings up here. So as I say, you can pull it down like that or you can play here. And let's put this as say 1.4. It's still too high, 1.3, one point three, we'll put it as 1.37, no, 1.36 will do. So let's come off that. Now as you can see, we have a pipe. So the last thing we need to do is rename this, and let's call this oops, pipe entry. And then finally, game object, create empty, right click and rename and just call this uh, let's call this green pipe and drag and drop the three pipes we've just created which is the gullet top and entry into that one object so now that one object of green pipe is now the whole pipe all the objects collectively Okay, so we've created our pipe. That should be ready when we create a script, when uh, our character jumps on and goes down our pipe into the underworld of the level. So, as I say, that's, uh, we'll, we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Uh, have a little play around. You extend your level a bit more. Next episode, we're going to be looking at putting a character in. So we'll actually be able to start test playing our level. Um, we're probably going to look at a little bit of scripting, so we need to start writing bits of script to get ourselves going. And uh, we'll take it from there in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching.